I remember being fresh out of high school and going straight to college that summer. I lived in the small town and grew up with a strong passion for skating and filming. I had my hopes and dreams, but I felt really down due to my own insecurities. Most people grew out of skating in my town and I was pretty much a loner. The one thing that kept me going was going out to skate and film when I could. I had been making videos since I was 10 years old, taking my parents' camera when they weren't home. That was something I knew I truly loved to do. Today, I just reached 1 million subscribers. In the beginning, it was hard for me to even break 1,000 views, but it's been years of nonstop hard work and struggle to get here. I wanted to leave my small town, see the world, and create something new. Something to fill in that void. That feeling that something had been missing or erased. It definitely wasn't an easy path. The bad was just as important as the good, and I learned so much from it. Life's not easy. Growing up's not easy. Neither is chasing your dream. I was lost after graduation. This part of my life was tough. I felt really down, and mentally, I was just not okay. I remember my mom asking me why I was sad. She could see through me. I would always say, it's nothing. Leave me alone. Always pushing my parents away. And mom, if you're watching this now, I'm really sorry about that. This is something I've never talked about, but due to really, really bad acne. My senior year in high school, I began to lose my self-confidence. It was hard for me to look anyone in the eye. I remember looking down at the floor while walking through the halls. I even skipped my graduation day just to avoid taking photos, and my best friend at the time hated me for it. We stopped talking, and at that point, I felt really alone. I had zero confidence, and it really brought me down and put me in a dark place, but I used that as my motivation. I ended up alone, but I put all my focus into my passion and just focused on what I love to do. One day, I watched a motivational video by a YouTuber named Ryan Higa. It was a Draw My Life video where he had told and drew his story. Story. I specifically remember this quote, life will get better if you choose to make it better. Choose to be happy, choose to better your life, because only you can make that decision. Those words and his message really hit me. I knew what I wanted to do, and the only thing that was stopping me was myself. That day I told myself, today, I'm gonna change. I had 300 subscribers at the time and I turned my sadness and horrible self-doubt into the biggest motivation I could have. This is where the story begins. I went straight to college only two weeks after graduating. And you know how I skipped my graduation day? That day I decided to go to my local skate park instead and ran into an old friend I hadn't seen in over a year from the town over. His name is Ryan. That day I met him and we became close friends again. We had a great session kept in contact. Time passed and I continued filming and skating when I had the time off school. I hit 1,000 subscribers after a few months and that was a big milestone for me, which changed everything. September 9th, 2013. I hit 1,000 subscribers tonight. I can't begin to explain how happy this made me. I put so much time into making my videos. I'm glad to know people take the time to watch them. Please help me get my videos out there. And hopefully my dreams of making a career out of this can come true. I dropped out of college shortly after this and took the big jump to move to LA to chase the dream. I actually got an offer to stay in LA for a month free because Ryan's friend was moving out of his apartment so they had room. Ryan invited me to go and I took my stuff and left home three days after. I gave my parents a three days heads up but they were not happy about it at all. I was still young. I couldn't cook, clean, or even do my own laundry. I hadn't even worked a part-time job before. They said I was still a kid and questioned how I would even survive. They saw how much I truly wanted to take this opportunity though and in the end I got their support. I was worried I couldn't take the old family car I used to drive, but I was able to take it with enough money to survive the first month. But I soon realized life on your own isn't easy, and the first month went by real quick. This is where reality hit me, where I learned the real value of money and what it was like to really have nothing. I found work right away, but I got fired from my first job ever, making sandwiches after the first week because I couldn't remember the menu or just work fast enough in general. I had no more money, and I actually spent those nights after work going street skating with a generator and lights filming as many people as I could instead of taking the time to study the menu. After I got fired, I told myself that I will never work a job like that again. 
Going to the city with no real life experience was tough. I spent every day from the day I arrived filming, skating, slowly building a name and networking. Ryan ended up moving back to Nevada after the first month and I had to figure out what to do after. I ended up staying in a one bedroom apartment in Hollywood with three others. There was no room but I was able to sleep on the couch for cheap. I was just gonna focus on what I had moved to LA to do. It was tough to make any sort of cash. I got lucky in the beginning and one of video contest which earned me some cash and got paid to film with a pro for a week straight. The only thing is I didn't get any more opportunities after that. I was struggling really bad financially since I had no actual source of income. I was starving most of the time and I literally lived off 39 cent burritos. I'm not joking either. It costed me three for a dollar. That was my dinner every night. It was exciting to live in a new city. I was just happy to be doing what I loved in one of the best cities to do it. It was refreshing since I had been a small town kid my whole life. There was another world out there. Everything was new to me. I didn't know anyone. Money wasn't the goal. It was just to be happy. I usually was out in the streets skating, filming, and sometimes just at the park, but always filming something. I would post every single day on Instagram. Just a clip or a photo of what I had shot that day. At this point, I was living so such a simple life. All I owned was my computer, phone, camera, and car. That was all I needed and I was free to go where I pleased with nothing holding me back. Since I had nothing at home and had no money to do anything, it motivated me never to be home and to always try to do something productive. I actually couldn't go out unless I made plans with someone because I would rely on their gas money to be able to use my car. I actually never had money to freely go out myself, so I had no sort of personal life. Luckily the grocery store was nearby so I could just walk there. I couldn't really buy much food regardless. I continued not to work and after starving for so long I started to get very slim. I would always feel weak and lightheaded and it actually started to affect my health. Friends would ask if I was okay and I always wondered what they saw but it was clear I wasn't fine. I felt sick often. Probably the thing I remember most was driving a group of friends around then going out to eat after and not being able to buy anything to eat and just watching them enjoy their food. I'd always try to avoid it because I hated going through that. I just wanted to get home to eat my cheap burritos, but everyone was usually hungry after the sesh, so I'd take them to grab food after. After half a year, my friend moved in and he forced me to go apply for government help. Since I was jobless and didn't have my own home, I lived off of EBT, which is government money for food. I was there for a while and I didn't know that was even an option, but I was just happy to be able to eat decently again. It was only 200 a month for food and if I managed it correctly, I could actually eat enough. I tried my best to network and meet people, always work on new projects, and continue to build my name. It was a slow process but throughout that year, I was able to gain a pretty decent following on all my social media. Many of LA's best skaters started to message me to film with them. At that time, I would go around filming the best skaters I could find and putting together edits of all the extra footage they had. The edits became really popular and many skaters would contact me to film opposed to me asking them. It was crazy. I would wake up to several messages from skaters all over the LA area to film with me. I was always free so that's literally all I did. The owner of the Hollywood apartment I had been staying at ended up getting evicted out of nowhere and I had no idea where to go. I lost the $750 deposit I made and was just left with $45 in my bank account. The crazy thing is we had one more month left on that lease before we would get our deposit back. That was just enough money to go back to Nevada if I needed to, but I didn't want to go back to Nevada as a failure, so I decided to continue couch surfing or just sleep in my car if I needed to. But luckily a YouTuber named Lamont offered me to move in with him if I would help him build his own YouTube channel. I decided to stay in LA and take that offer. The first video we made together went viral and it was a great start to our new team. I had a group of people I would consistently film and skate with and I considered those guys my close friends. But those skaters were not happy about me putting all this time into Lamont's channel and they turned on me. Some of them even hated on me for doing YouTube with Lamont. I was in shock and honestly really down about it. I realized that no one is gonna look out for me.
We were able to get his channel from 20,000 subscribers to 100,000 in only four months. It was a cool experience completely focusing on YouTube, which is what I originally wanted to do. But time went on, Lomont's channel was doing really well, and he even had his own brand too. But I was still sleeping on the couch. For example, when I was seeing this girl, I didn't even have money to take her out if I wanted to. I couldn't even feed myself. How was I supposed to have a relationship? But we broke up and that made me realize I couldn't keep living like that. I went back to focusing on myself and at this point I had so much motivation to focus on videos for my channel. The first video I started off with was just a day in the life and surprisingly that was what picked up. The first video did really well and it just changed everything. People really enjoyed to watch that and I continued to do so. I made videos about my personal life and in only four months I went from 24,000 to 100,000 subscribers. That was a huge deal for me. I had been broke for the last two years and I was finally able to make a living doing what I loved to do. It was great but it came with its negatives and one thing that really messed me up in the head was how people changed. People became more kind. People treated me nicely. Everyone wanted to be around me. Even those people who hated on me had started to message me and be friendly again. I was always a loner. I was always alone. Like why is everyone hitting me up now? And I had many friends where I didn't know if we were friends because of YouTube or if we had an actual genuine friendship. I didn't know if I was doing things for the right reason. I don't even know why I was creating some of the content I did. I was just doing it for the sake of views and getting my channel out there. But YouTube had begun to control my life. The people I surrounded myself with, what I did, all my actions. I had to figure out what it was I wanted and what really truly made me happy. I wanted friends that really cared for me. I wanted friends I could call family. I was making a living off what I loved to do but I wasn't happy. It was at this point that I had started Erased. And right after we released our first drop, I ended up taking my first trip to Tokyo. I went with my friend Marcos and it was a great time. We ended up staying in this guest house. Probably one of the best things about that trip was meeting people from that guest house. Everyone was so kind and welcoming. There was people from all over the world and it was really cool to hear everyone's stories. To be able to experience this new world was just eye-opening to me. I was spending my days in enjoying it, living in the moment. I did not care about creating content. I just did it for the love of it. This changed everything. It just made me really think about how I had spent my last two years in LA. As soon as the trip was over and I arrived back in LA, my friends had welcomed me back. Right then and there, I made the decision to return back to Nevada and rethink everything. I had so much going through my head that as soon as I got home, I set up the camera and just spoke everything that had been going through my head. I put it into one video and expressed everything I wanted to do from now on. My new goals and vision. Right after I uploaded the video, I had a random email from a stranger. He had reached out to me to start helping me with Erased and it was Edwin. And I never open up emails or even reply, but for some reason I felt Felt like I should and it was the best decision I could have ever made we hopped on a call and we ended up talking for like two hours I told him everything the new vision my new dream what I wanted to do from now on and he told me that night he would turn it into a reality So I returned back to Tokyo for three months this time. And just like that, the Erase project began. And I was just ready to take control of my life and just like erase all the bullshit, erase my past self. That's like the reason I chose Erase to when I was choosing a name because at that point in my life, that's how I really felt. Hey, yes, I thought of things I wanna say, but never said it. Searching how to get the girl's attention up on Reddit. Sick of all these worries, worry in my face, sighting. And I can talk without awkward silence Shit, I'm indecisive Never made my mind up Say I'm not depressed Cause isn't everybody kind
During that time, I was really happy. I was alone in a city where I knew no one. It felt great to start over once again. I wanted to do things for myself, and I wanted to figure out what truly made me happy. I ended up meeting great friends and built a little community here. Those friends are the friends you see in my videos today. So I repeated the process of going back and forth, building and growing. During that time period, I even met my future wife. We became friends staying at the same guest house. We'd just often casually talk, like when we'd run into each other in the shared living room or kitchen. But slowly, it turned into a relationship and before I knew it, two years had passed. And I was so happy with the time I had spent with Masumi that I proposed to her. At this point, I found what I was looking for. Erased continued to expand and I had learned so much during my time in Tokyo. It had a huge influence on my fashion, which really helped me rebrand myself. Without Edwin's help in the back end, none of this would be possible. He guided the brand towards the right direction throughout the whole way. Edwin, if you're watching this, just know I appreciate everything you've done for us. My new goal began to find balance in what I was doing and to do everything with passion. I stopped posting so much and I posted only when I had something meaningful or enjoyable to post. Nothing was forced anymore and I just wanted my intentions to be pure. I wanted to be happy and surround myself with good people. I started to build a following internationally as well. Before I knew it, I was just as big in Japan as I was in the US and that only helped me gain an audience from all over the world. World. And my videos started to get hundreds of thousands of views and even some of them with the millions. The numbers just continued to increase and this movement called the Erase Project became known worldwide. It's amazing how much my life has changed since those days of feeling so sad, empty, and alone. You're in control. Challenge yourself to be better because in the end I realized it was the little things that made me happy. I'm saying this for anyone who has ever been in a similar situation. Remember, it may be hard, but that will make you only appreciate the good that much more. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for giving me a chance. This is an opportunity that I'll forever be grateful for. We made it. One million subscribers.